Hey, Anxiety Warriors. Welcome back to the Anxiety Warriors podcast. My name is Margo. I'm Abby. And here we are, episode six, our very first guest episode. And we had such a blast talking to an old dear friend, Lauren Buckles. So yeah. before we hear our really, really fun interview with Lauren, here's just a little bit about who she is. Lauren Buckles is a mom and a certified yoga teacher for both children and adults. She recently created Nestful, a platform that teaches mindfulness-based practices to children and their caregivers. Her current public offerings include several virtual yoga classes for adults on Zoom. Lauren lives in the Hudson Valley in upstate New York with her husband and her son. Her love for and proximity to nature supports her work, her teachings, and her life. She is such an amazing woman. We cannot wait to tell you a little bit about the conversation we had. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Lauren shares in this conversation um, a lot around performance anxiety, which I think many of us can relate to. And um, for her, it started when when she was a child gymnast and she had uh, debilitating anxiety, uh, which really prevented her from getting through her meets and even presentations at school. And so during this conversation, she shares how different tools like reframing and how companioning her emotions and having compassion for her herself allows her to navigate her anxiety and take leaps into being seen and being heard and being able to perform in public. Um, she also shares a lot about how choice and the ability to have her needs met the way she sets herself up um, allows her to feel empowered um, during those more anxious moments. Yes. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait for all of you warriors to hear this conversation. Enjoy. But we are so excited that we have our very first podcast guest, our <laughs> first, our first anxiety warrior that isn't named Margo or Abby. Yes. <laughs> She's an amazing, amazing woman in person. Her name is Lauren Buckles. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you for having me. I'm so, so excited to be here with you both. Yay! We are so excited to have you. Um, for all our listeners out there, um, Lauren also is a kids yoga teacher, and we have all known each other for quite some time. Um, we have definitely supported each other on this journey of teaching kids yoga and mindfulness, and um, Lauren definitely has her own experiences with anxiety and um, navigating the world of anxiety starting from childhood. So she's a perfect first guest, A, because she's awesome and an anxiety warrior, and B, because we know her already, and that helps soothe our anxious nervous systems. Not a threat, <laughs> not a threat. <laughs> no flashing lights on Lauren's lovely face. I am safe. So you, um, you know, have grown up, you shared with me, you had anxiety as a kid. Um, you still navigate the world of anxiety now. Uh, will you share with us your anxiety story? Yeah. So, um, first of all, I just want to say, I think that talking about like the fact that we're talking about anxiety and like right away, I, I feel better about it. Like mm -hmm. the fact that, I mean, it, it's there, it's present, but I feel just the fact that we're talking about it. I feel, um, I feel like I'm able to own it a little bit. So mm -hmm. thank you for this opportunity. Wow. Yes. Um, I love the phrase owning it. Yeah, it feels, it feels important. Um, but yeah, so when I, growing up, you know, I had emotions like a child does, like a human does. And I think that um, at the time I didn't label it as anxiety or know it was anxiety. Um, it felt very much like being nervous. Uh, particularly, I remember... I used to uh, practice gymnastics and I used to compete and I wasn't particularly good in the sense that like, you know, I was, I was good enough to compete, but I, I, let's just say there was never any like dreams of me becoming an Olympic gymnast or anything like that was definitely a hundred percent off the table, <laughs> but I enjoyed it and I enjoyed practicing and it was very much something I did, you know, I would say most days of the week it, it was something I enjoyed and I did not enjoy competing. Um, I, 
used to get very nervous before gymnastics meets um, to the point where it felt almost like debilitating. Mm -hmm. Um, There was one time in particular that I remember I was going to a state championship and it was like out of town. Like we had to go stay, my parents and I had to go stay in a hotel and um, we went, I don't remember how far the drive was, it was somewhere upstate and we went and um, I was so nervous that I ended up not even competing. I Mm. scratched from the meet and um, I'm sort of, you know, I'm really grateful for having parents that didn't force me to do it because that felt like it wouldn't have been, like, I think that would have been really traumatizing Mm -hmm. for me had I been forced into a situation that was already, um, that I was already so anxious about. Um, I don't think I necessarily unpacked it at that time though. And then over time, you know, it started to show up in different ways. So that was like, you know, the experience I remember as a child. And then as I got older, I remember feeling anxious, um, talking in front of the class, right? Mm -hmm. Like anytime I had to give a presentation and this carried on into, um, college. And, you know, I, I remember feeling so anxious, just, you know, giving any type of presentation, even just like being called on in class, Mm -hmm. like, like full body anxiety. Um, And then this carried on further as I became a yoga teacher. Um, I did my 200 hour training and the first yoga class I had to teach was for the group that we were with um, that I was uh, training with. And I taught the class and it was a very much like out of body experience. Like I wasn't present for it at all. I was completely in my head. I was completely nervous the entire time and it so showed up. And then I cried hysterically after like in front of everyone, just like full blown tears. Wow. And, um, that was like, I think when it started to transform a little bit from, you know, because now I was stepping into a role that I, I was interested in participating in. And, um, so my relationship with my anxiety started to shift a bit. Um, yeah. It's interesting. I, I feel like I hear that the one theme that overarched between everything you just said, right. Starting from when you were a kid, all the way up to when you taught your first yoga class, years back. And, and first of all, I could totally relate to the performance anxiety thing as a former dancer. And I didn't dance competitively till college. So, you know, my my relationship to everything was different by then, Mm -hmm. but even just dancing on the stage, there was a couple of times that I didn't make it out on the stage either. And so I could totally (laughs) feel you on every word of that. Um, but what I'm constantly, what I, what I just heard over and over was that you liked stuff just enough, but you weren't necessarily super passionate about it. And then when you found your real, right, your relationship to teaching yoga changed. And so it was like, you were really, really invested emotionally, maybe in becoming better, right. And feeling stronger in front of a group of people. And so, I mean, first of all, a plus for moving through all of that and through your whole life though. I just, uh, I just wanted to share that. It feels like you were clearly passionate, right. About becoming, um, the best yoga teacher you can be. And so once that passion struck, maybe that helped your relationship to anxiety a little bit. Is that kind of definitely, I think, you know, part of it was that when I, I think you're exactly right. Like when I did gymnastics, I wasn't necessarily interested in the competition and, you know, the nature of competing is being judged. And Mm. I think that was my big fear was this like fear of not being good enough or fear of not being liked or whatever. So it was not, you know, I wasn't doing it out of pure enjoyment. And actually I ended up stopping gymnastics in that format. I ended up doing gymnastics uh, for my school, which was like a varsity gymnastics team. And the way it works is like you compete um, everyone at the time was competing for like 
uh, level nine scores. So like I was a level six gymnast and, you know, which meant like my scores would be really low more or less. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing is, is that when you compete in gymnastics up to level six, I don't know if it's the same now, I have no idea, but at the time up to level six, you would have a set routine that you had to do on every event and you had to do every event. But at varsity gymnastics, gymnastics for my school, I was able to choose what I wanted to compete. I could pick the event and I could pick what the routine I wanted to do. So Mm. it gave me choices, which was very empowering. And it gave me, you know, a sense of feeling like I had, you know, agency over my experience. And it was what I was, what I wanted to do. I just didn't do two events because I didn't want to do them. So my experience competing in that way was very different. And I was part of a team, which was Mm. different. You know, when you're in USA gymnastics and it's almost like you're like on your own, it's like you're competing Mm -hmm. for yourself. And Mm -hmm. I think being part of a team made a difference. So yeah, definitely. I think I enjoyed what I was doing more. And then especially with yoga, right. I didn't really go, I didn't go to yoga teacher training thinking I wanted to be a yoga teacher. So I think once that opportunity started to reveal itself and like, oh, this might be something I'm interested in. Oh, this might be something I can do. Then it was like, oh, I, this is a fear that I need to work through. So then it became about just doing it so that I would get through it (laughs) Mm. as part of it. And then also as time went on, I definitely had a desire to share these practices with adults and also children. So I just see are like all of these like really important themes emerging in your story, but it's also something we've been talking about these last couple of weeks too, is, is agency and choice and feeling understood, you know, you mentioned, and I find this like, so interesting. You mentioned, um, having like debilitating anxiety before some of these meets. Um, and I feel like you know, we all have different versions of debilitating anxiety. And when, when you and I talked on the phone, um, I shared with you, for me, it's like, I just lay in the bed, like I'm in like, you know, dissociation space. Right. Um, but will you share a little bit about, you know, um, what, what did this debilitating anxiety, like, how did it manifest in your mind, in your body, or even in your behaviors when it would start to come up? Uh, grief, just tears. Mm so many tears. It's still that way for me, Mm -hmm. I think on, and obviously, well, not obviously, but, um, it's not as intense as it was. Um, but it, I definitely still release emotions in that way, um, through crying. And, you know, I'm just thinking about how this like plays out even in my like day to day, you know, it can be as simple as just like feeling like I'm being put on the spot. It's almost like being, um, being caught off guard or being judged or being, it's more like being judged, being seen and heard. Um, but not in, in the way that I was hoping. Um, and yeah, so it shows up like, like tears, it shows up, um, like a tightness in my chest Um, and just this like overwhelming feeling of like being frozen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I I, um, think it was like, like, I think we spoke a little bit about fight, fight or freeze. mm -hmm. And I used to think it was flight, but Mm -hmm. I think now I'm realizing (laughs) it's more freeze. (laughs) Like, oh, I freeze. Cause I think about now all those times in the moment, you know, whatever, however I responded, I think about how, oh, well, I could have responded a little differently, mm. but in the moment I couldn't. Yeah. Right. What, what you were just saying about how you thought it was one thing, right. But then you thought about it some more and actually it was something completely different and how difficult it is once we're in the middle of a situation to really see clearly, Mm -hmm. uh, right? Especially if we feel like we're alone 
And uh, a lot of times, a lot of us do feel alone in our anxiety. And even though there is a lot more to talk about it now, and there's a lot more spaces where folks are feeling safer to share about these um, types of big emotional experiences, it's just amazing to hear, right? How many, how many folks you just, you look at them and it's like, wow, they've got everything together. They're, they seem so cool, calm and collected. And I've only, you know, we've only known each other for um, a few years and not on a super close level, but when I, when I see you online or when I, when we'd ever be together, it was just like, oh man, Lauren's just so calm. She's chill. She's got everything <laughs> together. And then it's funny. Cause I know I had shared to my, my Instagram, like, I don't know, maybe a couple months, months ago, I was doing like a introduct introducing me post that I try to do every few months. And I say that I cry at least seven times a day. And I remember you, you were one of the first comments. You're like, I cry seven times a day. And I was like, what really? And it, it was just one of those aha moments. It's just like, okay, that's right. I'm not alone in how I express and feel my anxiety, even though we've been, we've known we've been anxiety warriors for a really long time. <laughs> right. So like, I just think that it's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's, thank well, thank yeah. you for sharing that. It's like, cause sometimes I, you know, wouldn't think that that's how I come off, you know, cause here I am having this experience of just <laughs> <laughs> anxiety. Um, and of course it's not, not of course, I shouldn't say of course, but it's not chronic in that way. Right. Like I have moments of, of anxiety, I have moments of calm and, um, I'm, I'm realizing in my experience of being a human and my mindfulness practice that I do have the ability to hold many truths and emotions at the same time. So, mm -hmm. um, but thank you. That's, that's interesting that that's how I come off. I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that. I think we all like, think we come off one way and then the reflections from others were like, what? Like <laughs> someone called me bold the other day. And I was like, what? I was, about to, I was just about to bring that up, Abby, that you were like, someone's called me bold and assertive. And I was like, yeah, you are both of those things. But you were like, no, I'm not. I was like, what are you yeah. talking about? Who are you talking about? So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so, it's so helpful. I think when we get these reflections from people we know really well and people we don't know that well and how we're viewed because we probably like limit how we view ourselves a lot based on the experiences in the internal and don't really think about how we present ourselves in the external. Yeah. So, so we kind of touched on this, um, but you know, a lot of times, you know, and, and it kind of segues into just what Margot was saying is like a lot of us experience anxiety um, right. And now we're just going to talk about it. But the thing is that there was a period of time where none of us talked about it. Right. And, and, or we only talked about it with really close people. And the thing is, is anxiety can be extremely uncomfortable. Um, but there's something in the known, right? Like, oh, I'm in, you know, I'm a nervous person. I'm an anxious person. I'm just not going to do these meets. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, what inspired you to make the change? And, and you shared a little bit about like yoga inspired you enough. Um, and when we talked, you shared about how you reframe stuff to inspire you to make changes. So will you share a little bit about what's inspired you to move past the, uh, the crippling, debilitating anxiety? Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I just want to say too, like for a while, I didn't find yoga until I was in my early twenties, which, you know, I feel like is late for some people. I don't know, but I, I went, I'm, my point is that I went throughout life, you know, for a while without those kinds of tools. Um, so I did seek therapy and I was on, um, anti-anxiety medication and, um, you know, I wasn't, but I wasn't working through anything. It was mm -hmm. like sort of like a band aid. And there's, to me, there's absolutely nothing wrong with medication. I think it works for many, many people. Um, but when I was on it at the time, it was like not, it was not being used as, as a, as a tool to help yeah. manage. It was just, it was a band aid. Um, so I think I, that started to reveal itself to me a little bit. It was like, you know, I, I was noticing that I was still having this discomfort showing up in many ways. Um, and I think that when I 
found yoga, it was, I was looking for a way to, to sort of connect deeper to myself. I was looking for a way to, um, manage my anxiety. I was looking for, um, a community of people who were interested in exploring more spiritual or esoteric kind of dialogue and ideas. And, um, so it wasn't, wasn't just one thing that led me to it. Um, I think my, my way there was always sort of unfolding my way to yoga, but, um, then I realized when I started to, you know, I, yoga made me start to recognize what was going on in Mm -hmm. myself. And I, you know, first started to notice my thoughts and, and I realized how, um, how much negative self-talk I was having about myself all the time. And it was startling because I guess I had never noticed it. And, um, that was interesting to me. Um, and I started to sort of reframe the way that I was talking to myself in my head, you know, Mm. going through, um, affirmations or recognizing when I was thinking a thought that was harmful and, you know, uh, signing it as untrue, um, that, that sort of thing. And I think that it brought a lot of awareness, but it wasn't until I really started to practice mindfulness. And I know that the two overlap in so many different ways that it's kind of, um, tricky, but I, I think that once I started to practice mindfulness, I really started to have compassion for myself. Mm. So I think I learned to not be so hard on myself. And that I, I realized that being hard on myself didn't really get me anywhere. Like I could have all the self-awareness in the world and, you know, self-study and study myself. And, um, but if I wasn't allowing myself to show up in the moment, exactly if I don't allow myself to show up in the way exactly as I am, you know, I could say a present tense, uh, then I'm really, I'm really missing the point. Mm. Um, so that helped me start to reframe how just allowing myself to be however I am first before I try to make a change. And I think a lot of anxiety is just information. And that's what I started, um, to learn. Yeah. So some of your coping strategies, you know, it sounds like, um, have just really been with reframing and affirmations and paying attention to your thoughts, um, which are all things I super love too. (laughs) Um, so when, when you think about that, like, what are some of your go-to coping strategies, um, now, or, or even, you know, how has your life changed from using the strategies you just spoke about? Yeah. So I think the biggest one across the board has been feel it to heal it, Mm -hmm. you know, allowing myself to feel the emotion and learning, um, that it's there, it's information, you know, that there's nothing wrong with me that I don't need to change necessarily. It might, I might need to change something about what I'm doing, um, in order to navigate a bit Mm -hmm. better, but my experience is valid. And I think that for so long, I, my younger self, I thought, you know, that my anxiety was something that needed to go away. And now I know that it's, it's not something that needs to go away, that it's actually pointing me in a a direction. Mm. Um, Yeah. I love the phrase, feel it to heal it. That's mm -hmm. so I, we, we always say name entertainment, but you know, it's, that's the first time I've actually heard it. I mean, I love a good rhyme. <laughs> I really do. It's just, it's, it's how I, it's how I process information. It's how I taught my students to process information when I was a preschool teacher. And, and even now, um, and I just feel like it's the phrase phrases like that to latch onto can be really, really powerful because mm-hmm. it's something that you can easily grab onto in any type of anxiety or big feeling that you're dealing with. Right. Yeah. And I, I really resonated with what you said about just like not wanting to, I just, before when you were like, I don't want to be judged. Right. I'm, I'm worried about being seen and heard. Right. And so how do we cope with those things? The first mm-hmm. thing we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge what we're feeling. 
or feeling anxious about not wanting to be heard or what's going to happen when this person truly hears me or experiences what I'm feeling. Right. Um, and we feel the need to perform and hide. And so I just think it's awesome that that's a, I think that's a great one that everyone listening should start to employ. Yeah. (laughs) Feel it to heal it, allow yourself to acknowledge and be present with what's going on. And that's the only way you're going to be able to move through it. And it's not about fixing. Like you just said, beautifully, it's about being able to acknowledge, be present with, and then be able to have the choices that you can take to the next steps. Yeah. And it may not be fixing it. It may just be being with it, allowing it to, to ruminate and be there with you and until it passes, which we know it always does, right? Yeah. Feelings pass, they come and go. And two things can be true at once. So amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually the two things that can be true at once, I think ties in beautifully to um, a story that you shared with me earlier, Lauren, about how you had spoken to your yoga teacher about emotions. And then you told me this like story, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I am. you know, I've been doing this now for quite a few years, meaning yoga and mindfulness. And a lot of the work with kids has been being mindful of emotions, right? So noticing them, you know, noticing how they show up in our bodies, making choices about what to do with our bodies, you know, what kind of yoga poses or breathing do you want to do based on how you feel, like making choices off based on how you feel in the moment, like in internal experience. And um, when I started practicing uh, Katona yoga a few years back, my one of my first classes with Naveen Mishan, she was um, teaching and, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. She was doing all these things that I didn't normally like um, experience, like in, in terms of just the way she was talking, her dialogue, um, some of the, the postures she would make minor changes to like flipping wrists and things like that. And I was really into it. I felt I left the class feeling like, um, I didn't feel depleted. I felt, um, very whole. Uh, and sometimes after yoga, I feel like sort of like, you know, like a yoga high, (laughs) like like you walk out kind of like drowsy. Um, and that's not, wasn't my experience. So it felt very, I felt very vibrant. And, um, you know, I took another class with her and she was talking about, um, you know, measuring up and using the body as a measuring tool because um, we don't go by feeling because feelings lie. And I was like, oh boy, because, you know, I'm pretty, <laughs> I like, well, I go by feelings all the time. <laughs> Big problem. Um, so I, said something to her after class. And I was like, listen, I really like what you're doing here. I'm really like, I'm really feeling this like style of practice and this theory that you're like overlaying on your, um, your asana class. And, um, I'm just, you know, I've been teaching mindfulness for a while and I'm very like emotions driven and interested in exploring them and how they kind of how to navigate them in life. And, and she was like, you keep doing that. She was like, this will just add to that. And it was so nice because, um, she didn't tell me that her way was the way she didn't tell me to stop doing what I was doing. Um, she very much just validated my experience and then gave me more tools to put in my toolbox. And, um, she was, she said, you know, feelings, feelings are information, but sometimes feelings lie and it's true. And now I think about that. The other thing that she says is, you know, you can set up your conditions, right? So you can, you know, like I have my water here in case I get thirsty and I have my headphones and whatever, like (laughs) I made sure I knew who I was going to be talking to, right? Like I know you guys, So I can set up my condition so that I know that I'm safe, but I can't necessarily, um, I can't necessarily have total control over my circumstances. So like these tools help me navigate my circumstances with a bit more ease Mm. and I can set up my conditions well so that I can navigate my circumstances well 
And um, that's how I've sort of reframed it. And that's how I look at my anxiety. It's like, okay, sometimes my anxiety is a lie, you know, or sometimes it's covering an emotion, another emotion that I don't realize in the moment. Like sometimes it's, it's anger or it's um, shame or whatever, you know, and I have to kind of dig a little deeper and maybe in the moment, that's not the moment for that. So just knowing that it might not be what I think it is, might not be how it feels. I think it's awesome that a, you had a teacher that was able to take what you said, which by the way, big anxiety warrior win, the fact that you went up to her after class Mm -hmm. and told her how you felt about it. And so I think it's amazing that you had the courage and the strength to go and and speak your truth to this person who you you were curious about this practice or this, this way of um, arriving at, at this type of yoga, but not everything sat with you. And you, you know, you made the bold choice to say, I'm going to talk to this person about it and let her, you know, give her a little bit of like the 411 on why you think the way you do. And I think it's amazing that she said, that's great. We're going to take what you feel and just, this will be more tools for you because not everybody would have taken it like that because the ego comes in too. Right. And she could have easily been like, well, like you said, this is the way that Katona yoga is practiced or you need to leave your feelings at the door kind of thing. So, and I, what I hear you saying also is just that because you know yourself right through all these mindfulness practices for years is that you know your triggers. And so you're able to set yourself up for the most success. Right. So I just think that so many brave anxiety warrior moments in that story. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like where you are right now is you've learned to accept that you have anxiety and you've learned the different ways that it manifests and the ways that it shows up for you um, in your life. You've learned how to speak up. You've learned how to companion it and see what's actually happening. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't anxiety. And you have all these um, strategies that you use, affirmations, um, boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. That will be another, another conversation. (laughs) Um, and so, so what advice would you give your younger self? Like if you could have a conversation with your younger self and give them some advice around navigating anxiety, what would that be? Your experience is valid. Mm -hmm. Your emotions are normal. It is normal to not feel good all of the time. Mm. It's normal to feel uncomfortable. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. Um, I would just want to validate my experience. Yeah. Because I think that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's what was missing, you know? Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Your experience, whatever it is, good or bad is your experience. And so, right. Yeah. Feel it, feel it, yeah. live it. We don't have to pretend that it's not happening. You know, we don't have to, we can have some tools to manage it, mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. totally, totally valid to feel, to feel that way right. and to feel any way for that matter. Right. <laughs> Right. And it ties in to the beginning where you're like, what is wrong with me? It's like your feelings are valid and there's nothing wrong with you. It's- Somebody write that on a poster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, final question before we get into a lightning round. What does being an anxiety warrior mean to you? Being an anxiety warrior means that I've learned how to navigate my anxiety with compassion that um, I've accepted it and that I've, uh, I understand that it's a natural part of my human experience. Mm. Yes. All the sparkles and twinkles. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I I will say like, Lauren is a like compassion anxiety warrior. Like, mm. like her theme always is it. She always leads with compassion. Like her strength is compassion for herself and for others. So, um, 
It's your warrior superpower. It is your warrior superpower. Oh, I'm getting a little emotional. Oh, oh yay. Well, <laughs> but I'm you know- not going to get anxious about that. <laughs> But if I was, it would be okay. That's right. You could feel it here. (laughs) This is the forum for getting anxious and, and just having it be here will help hold it with you. Yeah. That's what was coming up. But yeah, I know. Like you said, everything makes me emotional, everything, but that's all good. Okay. Fun. It's time for some like lighthearted silly. So this is going to be the first time we've done lightning round that wasn't just the two of us. Just that's two right. Of us. <laughs> we can make it if we try. Actually, there's three now of us. Now there's yeah. three of us. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have the rights to this song, everybody. <laughs> All right. So okay. we're going to tag team this. One yes. from Abby, one from me. You got yeah. this, Lauren. All we're, right. we're here. We're holding you. We're holding space. Even, with even you. though it's called Lightning Run, if you need to pause and think, that's okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to spit Thank the answer you. out immediately. It's just, yeah. give yourself okay. a few seconds. That's fine. I got a serious question for you. Okay. okay. God. When is it okay to wear socks with sandals? <laughs> <laughs> wow. She's really thinking about it. Everyone. <laughs> I am because I want to say never, but it's, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay um if you have to run to the mailbox or if if uh, sometimes I put socks on my son and then put his sandals on because oh little little kids it's fine that doesn't count okay so for me um when you have to get the mail (laughs) okay that's good Abby, this question, I cannot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your go-to donut? Oh. Uh, probably chocolate glazed. Mm, that sounds good. It does. Um, what was one of your favorite childhood TV shows? Um, Kids Incorporated. <laughs> Do you remember that show? Kids Incorporated. Something like that, right? Come on. I do not know this show. Okay, this is my final question. You ready? What has been your either you so it's it can be one or the other. Either your pandemic anthem, so a song that's like maybe lifted your spirits or like has been a go-to, or it can be an artist who you've just been like listening to on repeat through the pandemic. Um, reggae, Bob Marley. Nice. Always yeah. a comfort. Always a comfort, Bob Marley. And makes my my son dances to it. Oh, to three little yay. birds. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Like he is such a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, love seeing his pictures. <laughs> um. All right. So last question. And I got to be honest, I'm kind of deciding right now which one to ask you. You have three seconds. <sighs> three, two. What is your favorite animal sound? <laughs> you were going to make me. This is what she does, Lauren. Freaking she made me pretend animal, to drink like hot noise. soup. Yeah, that was worse. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate I feel seen. Uh. Oh, the owls. That sounds like it's like, who cooks for you? But it's like, who cooks for you? Like, who cooks for you? Right? Is what it kind, a- of, what kind of owl is that? That's so interesting. I wish my husband knows. I forget which one. <laughs> who cooks for owl? you? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Amazing. I love oh. it. Yes. Lightning yeah, round is so done. good. All right, Lauren, you rocked that lightning round. Woo! Thank you so Woo-hoo! much for being a good sport, playing along. <laughs> it wasn't so hard, or at least my questions weren't so hard. Make you make any an animal noises? <laughs> no, I know. I will scare away our future guests. I'm sorry, <laughs> or you'll track them. So we um, do a weekly segment called Win of the Week, and so you're our first guest. You're going to be the first one that isn't named Margot or Abby to share their Win of the Week, and a Win of the Week is simply something that felt or went awesome for you this week. It could literally be the tiniest thing in the world, or it could be something huge and monumental, whatever was your win for this week. What do you got for us? I took a nap today. (gasps) 
someone with a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> we both nap. napped. <laughs> The same time, and it was great, and yeah. that was a win. That's a huge yes, it win. was sending you sparkles and twinkles. Mm-hmm. And receiving it, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest, our first guest. This was amazing. Felt so good to talk to you and see your lovely face. So, where can any of our listeners uh, find you? So you can find me. I created a platform called Nestful, and the website for that is nestfulminds.com. Uh, so you can find me there. You can find me on Instagram. My personal handle is at L Buckles and Nestfuls is also Nestful Minds at Nestful Minds. And uh, if you want to share just quickly, like what is Nestful Minds? Why did you create it? So Nestful is a platform I created um, to help parents, caregivers, anybody working with kids to um have a little bit of a deeper understanding of mindfulness practices and tools and techniques really to integrate them into the lives of their children and then their own lives too. Sounds perfect. Sounds like something all people need, especially Mm -hmm. the kiddos, parents, amazing. And we love your Instagram feed. It's awesome. All right, Lauren. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Anxiety warriors unite. We're so happy that you were here as our first guest. We love you. you. Yeah. Thank thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. It was so fun listening to our conversation that we had with the amazing Lauren Buckles. We hope that all of you warriors out there enjoyed and had some um, yummy nuggets to take away from so many amazing things that she was so open about with us. I know one of my takeaways was just how um, she embraces her emotions in such a powerful, powerful way. Right. She really is an emotional superpower kind of gal. Yeah. And I yeah. just can truly appreciate that as an overcryer myself, or maybe I would, maybe I shouldn't say overcryer, but as somebody who believes firmly in all emotions being valid and being okay and not needing to be fixed. Mm-hmm. I really got that from, from our chat with her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that really stuck out with me is just all the themes that keep um, like emerging, uh, or arising when, when we're talking about anxiety and how I could so relate when she was questioning, like, what's wrong with me, right? Like, I feel <laughs> like so many of us that have anxiety have that question. Um, and I love that at the end, like, you know, the advice she gave is like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like all your feelings and all your experiences are valid. You know, and like when she said that, it just like it sat in my heart in like this welcoming way. Um, yeah. You know, I've I've known Lauren for a long time, like as we talked about through the kids yoga world, and you know, I I don't even know if it comes across like she mentioned compassion, but I just like want our like listeners to know like Lauren is probably one of the most compassionate people I've ever ever met. She really truly has this heart of gold. And, um, she just is an incredible human being and an incredible friend. And I, I just feel so, so lucky to know her and, and grateful. She was on our podcast as our first guest. Yes. She definitely made our anxious hearts feel safer (laughs) being with someone that we know and that we knew would would be an awesome, um, guest and, and, take care of us in the way we hopefully took care of her. So we are so grateful to her. Thank you, Lauren. And to all of you amazing listeners um, out there, we hope that you enjoyed this episode and we are psyched for episode seven coming up next week. So please reach out to us. We want to hear from you. What kinds of things do you want us to talk about? Um, You have topic ideas. You're interested in being a guest on the podcast. You think you'd be an awesome anxiety warrior fit please reach out. We're at anxiety warriors podcast on Instagram, and you can send us an email at anxiety warriors podcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for being with us. Warriors. We love you. We love you till next time.